pretty much. Um, and I will go back to the note editor here and um, turn that back to solid because back to material because we don't need to see that anymore. Um, so in the use nodes tab over here, I can actually get rid of that altogether. I can hook up a viewer node with output viewer. We don't do this very often, but uh, it's pretty nice to get get into it now. So we'll hook up the render layers into the viewer so we can see the background. We'll put on uh, we'll put on backdrop as well. We didn't render all this all the way, so the entire picture is not in, but uh, that's fine because we can see what we need to see. Um, so we're gonna hit add, and we'll, we will add in a, uh, a glow, which will be glare. We'll add in glare in the in between both of those. So now what we have is if we go to fog glow, which is what I want to do, we can change down the threshold, maybe not that low. Turn down the threshold to maybe 0.4 and the size up to 9 and the quality up to high. Um, so when this renders, you will see we have a bit of a glow on there, which is nice. So I want to go ahead and duplicate this glare node and put that right there by hitting Shift D on my keyboard. We will go ahead and change this to streaks now and change the streaks to 2 and the threshold down to 2 or 0.2 rather. Um, we will change the fade to is it down or up? I think it's down. We need is what we need. Yeah, down. So we'll change it to 0.8 exactly. Um, and we will do nothing else. I think that's what we needed to do for the streaks. And for the one of the last things I want to do, we would usually do vignette, but we don't actually need to do that since this is uh, already such a dark scene in the first place. I want to add in a bit of distortion so we'll go ahead and add in some distortion of lens distortion hook that up right in between all of those and we will add in some dispersion so we'll go like uh, point 0.2 dispersion what this does is pretty much if you can you can't see because ooh, well there you go um, yeah, what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this distortion um, so disper dispersion rather so on the first frame I want to hover my cursor over the dispersion and um, and we're going to change this the the value to maybe point that's still too much point zero four point zero four and we'll hit I when our, when our hover cursor is hovered inside of the dispersion on frame number three we will change the dispersion to point two and since we have automatic keyframing on that just automatically put a keyframe right there and then on frame fifteen I want to change the dispersion down to zero yeah negative point two dispersion negative negative point two distortion sorry um, and then on frame 30 we will change this back to zero uh, shift a and we're gonna add in one more thing and I promise this tutorial will be over um, <laughs> we're gonna add in a cylinder we're gonna RX 90 we can oh, turn off automatic keyframing because we don't need any keyframes on this RX 90 and then we're gonna hit our RZ 90 and what I want to do is I kind of want to have some particles come out of this so what we're gonna do is scale this by hitting S X and we're going to scale that all the way out to the length of the tutorial word all the way out. We're going to move it over a little bit, scale it up a little bit, something like that. And we only need these first couple of uh, faces, so I can go hit F, uh, hit 5 and 3 on my numpad. And we're going to get rid of this uh, end face right here by going to face select mode and hitting delete and delete face. And we'll do the same thing for the other side, delete face. So now it's kind of just like a hollow cylinder. Um, and what we'll do is I will select all of the faces by hitting B and just dragging a, bo ooh, dragging a box, turn a little bit to the side so we can get those faces. Uh, turn a little bit to the side, hit B to box, select all these faces down here and on the side as well. I want to grab some of these. So we'll grab all those except for these four faces right here. We'll hit delete faces. Go ahead and move that outside of the tutorial. We'll scale it down. Scale it down by hitting S on my keyboard, some more like this, and S, X, moving it on up like that somewhere. And what I want to do with this is I want to add in a bit of particles. Um, so we'll go ahead and go to the particles tab, and with this 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 cylinder over here, we'll hit new and scroll on down. And first thing we'll do is get rid of the em emitter so we don't see that emission, so we don't see the actual cylinder. I also want to change the start frame uh, to three. So when the text comes down and impacts, boom, right there on frame three, that's a little slow. So I'll go ahead and go maybe frame two, and the end will be frame three. So it's only going to emit particles for two frames, frame two and frame three. 
So now we have that, as you can see, we can have those particles. It kind of slams down and those particles come out. By the way, this is way too many particles. So we're going to go ahead and change this from 1,000 to maybe 100. Might even be a little bit less than that. Um, I think eh, that'll do. Yeah, that'll do. Um, and also, I want to go ahead and and select a plane. Go to Physics tab and add in Collision. So now with the so now the particles uh, will collide on the plane instead of just passing through it. I also want to go ahead and with the plane selected, I want to change some of these settings. I want to change the particle damping and turn that up a little bit, and the particle friction, and we'll turn that up as well. So they'll just bounce a couple of times and they'll stop on the plane. So it's not so bouncy like they just were a moment ago. In the particles tab on the on the the cylinder we have here, the dismangled cylinder, um, I'm gonna go ahead and change the emitter geometry of the normal to five instead of one, and the random to two. That looks pretty good. Um, also, what I want to do is go ahead and take a look at. Uh, we'll turn the Bernoullian up to five as well. And maybe I'll even shoot the random up to five too. So we have five on all those values. Um, that looks pretty good. Maybe the Bernoullian is a little bit too much. We'll do two on the Bernoullian or brown, whatever. Uh, maybe even less than that. One. We'll go with one on that one. Yeah, sure. Um, and we might even add some more particles back in. We'll go ahead and go up, bump the particle amount up to 300 instead of 100 like we had. If you look at this from the camera's point of view, you see that we have those particles burst on out like that, which looks pretty cool. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to create a shift A, and we're going to add in a uh, an icosphere. And we're going to move this icosphere by hitting M on my keyboard, and we're going to move this to uh, the layer over here. Any layer doesn't really matter. Uh, and then with the materials tab, I want to go ahead and choose the emission material that we created earlier for the uh, for the inside of the text here. And now that we have that set up, I'm going to go back to our plane, back to our back to our cylinder with our particles on it. And go down to render and change this from halo to object and select the dupli object as icosphere. And now we have a bunch of little icosphere babies uh, on our plane. We will change the, the size down and the random size all the way up to 1 because random is always great. If we take a look at this now, while it's playing, you should be able to see that when the emit the particle the particles come out, they're emitted and they have that that uh, blue texture. I might want to turn that, that size up a little bit, maybe to point seven. Yeah, maybe something like that. Looks looking good, looking good. All right. Um, I also wanted to do something else. Oh yes, that's right. All right. Okay. Um, I wanted to grab the the icosphere and instead of just having one uh color we'll have we'll we'll hit shift d on this icosphere and move it over and one more time we'll hit shift d and move it over uh so now we have three of the same ones over here on the materials tab I hit this four or whatever number there is right there and change this color to a little bit darker of a blue and if we go into render mode you can see that now now that one's darker than the other t than the other two with this third icosphere so i'm gonna hit three right there whatever number that is and we will change this to an even darker blue right there. Maybe a little desaturated. Something like that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right. And I also want to change all of these to smooth shading. Like that. Looking pretty good. All right. Um, so I'm going to hold down Shift and right-click each one of these and go to Relations and hit New Group. And um, this group will be our, our, our favorite group ever. We'll go back to the Particle System. And okay, if I can grab it, I can go back to the particle system, scroll on down, and instead of object, we'll go to group and select the group that we had before. So now instead of just one color, we have all three of the different colors that we made earlier, which is really nice. Yeah, it's great for variation. We're going to get, select the camera and change the focus to the text and change the radius size up to 0.1. And also, a big thing before I forget, make sure you unhook this viewer node and hook back up the composite node or you will get a black screen. So I've gotten comments about that before. Make sure you hook that c composite node up. I've seen that plenty of times. Um, it is real shame to wait uh, hours and hours and hours for something to render, then realize that it's messed up because you did not hook up the composite node. And now you got to render the entire thing for another 12 hours because that's never fun. So uh, let me know what you guys want to see down in the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. But until then, bye.